YouTube and welcome to Car Mechanical. Today I'm going to give a review of an Android application that measures car horsepower. The one that I'm showing is called Engine Power Meter, however there are plenty of alternatives out there, they work in fairly the same way. The thing that's pretty unique on this one and the reason I've used it is it just uses a bunch of information from your phone. So the first thing we're going to put in is the information it's going to need. It's going to want to know your car's weight. So for my car, it's an Audi A3 TDI. It's about 1180 kilograms. I'm going to add my weight in. I'm going to add in half tank of fuel. It's about 1300 kg. The next thing it wants to know is the gearbox loss. It's just standard settings in this one, so we're just going to go for 14%. Then we're going to stick in the drag coefficient, which luckily it has for my car. If it doesn't have it for yours, then you just sort of find out what the closest one is and pop that in. Unfortunately, this app isn't available anymore, but as I mentioned, there are plenty that are similar. Make sure that your sat nav's enabled, and away you go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how this app works in practice. I've set up in my car with my camera recording my phone, and we have a camera on my dashboard. I've actually taped it to my steering wheel. Um, it was the easiest way to get a clear view of the dash to show you the revs and the speed. So it's going to pull off from standing here. And it's not the quickest app to refresh in the world. You see as you pull off it sort of gives you a figure but it doesn't really consistently go up. It refreshes every second or so every you know little bit of time it refreshes. But we can see there that it's giving us our figures there and it's refreshing and updating. So with my car it's a 1.9 TDI Audi A3. It's non-pump produced but the book figure for it says that it should put out 110 horsepower and we've just seen on screen 110. So the interesting thing with this app, it doesn't know what your car's engine is, it doesn't know what power it should be putting out. So it's important to get your setting numbers as close as possible. Uh, however, it does appear that I'm putting out around about what I should be putting out in the car. I'm just going to go for a second run here to sort of show you and you sort of see where it's making the peak power. So I think most diesels as well make their peak power at around 3 to 4,000 RPM. So as I pull off here, you see I'm pulling off at 3,000, put my foot down, I'm going to change up to make 75 then and we're changing up again, we're heading towards 85, then towards 90 and it backs off again. This is because it's uphill. Uh, so being uphill the car doesn't pull it positively as it would either downhill on a flat. The best way to test this application is on a flat piece of land. So again, just another run. This one uh, is a little bit flatter. So it is still uphill a little bit, but it's not as steep an incline as before. And we get to sort of see a bit of a closer reach of what it should be. Third run. Again, we're hitting peak power about 100. It says 121 just then. I'm not really sure that's correct. I think the app might have just peaked a little bit. It might have just picked up some peak readers very quickly and gone above what it normally would do. The best way to test this, as I said, is on flat. If you're going uphill, you're going to lose a bit because you're on an incline. If you're going downhill, you're going to gain a bit because you're on a decline. It only measures positive acceleration. So it only measures when you're sort of moving forward at a positive speed. If you move to coast, like I'm showing here, you're not going to get a reading really. It's only when you start to accelerate again it gives you a reading. I think the reason this app's really good is it works if your car isn't OBD2 compliant. And my car is OBD2, but not to the level that's supported by applications like Talk, where you can just buy a Bluetooth OBD2 reader that you plug in by torque and you can get all sorts of figures and vehicle codes and everything but if you've got a car that doesn't have even have an ECU uh, as an ECU that isn't OBD2 compliant you can get this useful information it's sort of good for a health check and just knowing what power you're putting out and it was quite reassuring for me to know that my car was more or less where it should be from the factory there are other applications out there on the Android store now because of this application is no longer available uh, they all pretty much do the same thing. I hope that you've found this useful. Um, I hope that if you're doing similar things yourself, so if you're going to put on a bigger turbo on your car, a new exhaust, you can use this for a side-by-side -side comparison to see what kind of gains you are getting. Thank you for watching, and if you do have any questions, uh, please ask in the comments below.